Seabool Chris Childs here with another installment of Totally Fuck Complete Combat Theory. In today's video, we're going to focus a little bit on something more uh, seemingly rudimentary than we have in past videos. And we're going to talk about the Sei Peng Mao or the horse stance, uh, as we call it in English. Now, this is a technique that is uh, the most common throughout all traditional Kung Fu and oftentimes the most misunderstood. There's a lot of misconceptions out there about uh, the uh, horse stance and how to use it in fighting, if it can be used in fighting, whether or not it's, it's a worthless uh, as a technique and worthless as an exercise as well. There's a lot of people who talk about using it for strength development and, um, and as an exercise. And we're going to talk about some of those things and sort of uh, try to dispel some of those uh, common misconceptions about this rudimentary technique in Kung Fu. Here I'm demonstrating the proper structure of a horse stance. Notice the weight is evenly distributed between both my left and right sides. Here's the horse stance from the side view. Notice that the weight is evenly distributed and I'm not leaning forward or backward. It's important to keep the horse stance in a neutral position in terms of weight distribution. Here I demonstrate a common exercise found in traditional martial arts using the horse stance. However, this is only a basic training exercise, and the horse stance is at its weakest from the forward position. For combat application, you would use the stance from its structurally strongest point, the side. A simple way to test the structure of the horse stance is to find an immovable object, such as a wall, face it sideways, and press on it. If the structure of the stance is correct, the force of the push will be felt in the rear leg. Fighting is dynamic in its movement. No one will come to you while you sit in your perfectly structured horse stance waiting to strike them. Practicing the shooting step or buma is essential to closing the distance. With the completion of each step, you should land in a perfectly structured stance, as this will be the strongest way to deliver a strike. Here we have the horse stance used in conjunction with a commonly used strike in our system, the chop choy. Notice the use of the buma and the structure at the completion of each technique is the same as the structure used during each of the previous exercises. If properly utilized, the structure of the horse stance will add tremendous power to your punches. In order to get the correct timing and distancing down, a variety of bag and partner exercise training is necessary. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the misconceptions of the horse stance and how to use it. Uh, I already kind of briefly went over in the structure section one of the uh, commonly held beliefs that you actually use the horse stance from a forward position. So you would sit in your horse stance and deliver your strikes from this way, whatever you're going to do from this position. Now, um, in the structure section, I went over how the strongest position for the horse stance is from the side. From, the, from this forward position, um, no matter what, no matter how long you train the horse stance, uh, how strong you think your legs are, if there's an oncoming force coming directly at you from this way, you'll fall backwards. Now, the reason is, is if you look at the plane that my feet are on, the, the straight line that my feet are on, there's nothing supporting me from the back. So if a force comes this way, it's, it's basically up to whatever strength I have to resist that oncoming force. Anything strong will push me over. The reason why this structure is strongest from the side is whatever force um, that is, is oncoming from the side can be resisted with the rear leg and pushing forward. So um, if the horse stance is used from this forward position, it will be thought of as be kind of a weak, ineffective stance. And that's uh, the reason behind, behind that common misconception. Another misconception is, is that the thighs have to be parallel to the ground. This comes from the idea that you're using the horse stance as a training exercise to develop strength in your legs. Um, so you'll see oftentimes many people holding a stance where they're squatting really low trying to make their thighs parallel to the ground and they'll stand there. Now, um, there can be some benefits to doing that. It can be argued that there's benefits. Um, for our purposes, we're training a horse stance uh, to be structurally sound for use in fighting. Now, for use in fighting, all that's really required is to drop the center of gravity and um, you, you want to have your legs in a position where you feel the strongest lifting and the strongest pushing down. 
So this is a, about a, the right height for a horse stance for use in combat. Now, um, some people will say that you want to train lower stances uh, to develop strength and then different stances for combat. However, um, it's my personal belief that you're going to fight how you train. So if you want to uh, develop your skill in a way that you're going to actually use it, what you're going to want to do is train it in that way. You don't want to uh, train a really low stance and then you develop the muscle memory for being in that position, and then when you go to fight, you attempt to drop down that position. Um, a stance that low in, in, in combat, in sparring, fighting, whatever, um, however you want to call it, is actually, uh, it can be, well you, you can say it's, it's uh, a solid position, you drop your center of gravity, um, it's less mobile. So, as I said, fighting is dynamic, and it's movement, and if you're stuck in one position, if it's hard for you, or it takes you a little bit of time to move out of that position, that's time you're that your opponent's going to be trying to strike you, or that's going to be time spent that you won't be able to get to the opponent in order to deliver your techniques. So that's another misconception. Um, now, in talking about it as an exercise, um, there's this uh, big sort of thing in the Kung Fu community where people talk about these lengths of, of time that they hold the stance, and they, they do it with a lot of pride, uh, talking about holding it for insane durations of time. What that comes from is, is um, you need to, before you can train to move in the horse stance, you need to train it in a still position first. If you can't maintain the structure while you're holding still, you're not going to be able to do it while you're moving. So the exercise is designed to sit in the horse stance for a predetermined length of time and hold that position and keep that structure as perfect as possible. Now. Um, in the beginning, so for somebody who doesn't exercise, or even for people who do exercise but aren't used to that type of position, there will be some strength benefit, but that will sort of stop after uh, a period of training. There's not any, in my opinion, there's not any real significant benefit to holding the horse stance for 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, that's just my personal opinion, and that's what I've found through my experience in training. Now. Um, it is advisable for beginners to hold that position for certain lengths of time, uh, ranging from one to five minutes or, you know, something of that nature. And that's to develop that structure. In this video of lead hand sparring, several examples of the horse stance being used in live exercise can be seen. Notice the dynamic movement of the sparring match and how it renders a static horse stance useless. The participants in this sparring match are using the Buma to bridge the distance and land their punches.